Dear participants, welcome to the second session. In the first session, we discussed the philosophical argument for applying econometrics, wherein we identified two key fallacies, that is the populace fallacy and the post hoc fallacy. We also identified that cause and effect relationship is what econometrics is searching for. In the second session, we are going to now focus on arguments for econometrics, that is causality as the foremost argument of econometrics. We have to understand causality because causality is actually developing and investigating cause and effect relationship between two or more than two events. Before we proceed with that, we need to differentiate between causal relationship and casual relationship. Casual relationship is any kind of relationship which is not backed by evidence. On the other hand, causal relationship, which is our objective in research, which is an, our objective before formulating a policy, is to identify cause and effect relationship. And a relationship which is cause and effect, it helps her to determine the reality of the phenomena or how things are actually working. In social sciences, because things are not visible and because there is erratic human behavior, it is difficult to determine cause and effect relationship. But without an understanding of cause and effect relationship, we can also, we cannot have policies that will have the same impact on people or through people, which the objective is. Therefore, it is always important to search for causal relationship. On the other hand, a casual relationship is presumed to have some kind of correlation or it may have some kind of correlation. But correlation cannot be converted into cause and effect relationship. In this example, you see that if train approaches the track on a railway station, if you see the, the birds will flock away. Now, because this event is physical in nature, visible from our eyes, therefore we will not be, we, will, we do not have any doubt that what is happening in this kind of scenario. So we know that the birds are not flocking because with their flocking, the train will be coming. But actually the reason is because train is coming and the tracks are shaking, the birds are flocking away. Therefore, this is the relationship which we will be easily able to understand because this is physical. However, when it comes to social behavior, economic behavior, it becomes complicated. And then we need to have a deeper understanding of cause and effect relationship. Let us understand by an example. As you see, there is a figure and there are two curves, two line charts are there. One it is C green and another is B blue. If you see what kind of relationship will be there between these two, we have not yet known that what these two graphs are. But if we closely see, we will be trying to reach a conclusion that yes, there is some kind of relation. And I tell you, uh, in these two graphs that the correlation is 0.17. The correlation R between these two graphs is 0.17. Somebody suppose say, no, it is more than that. Suppose it is more than 7.75, which is close to 1, which means high correlation is there. So our result or conclusion will be that these two are related. But this is what econometrics tries to solve that mere correlation may not be cause and effect relationship. Like the same graph is there. If you see, now I tell you what these two curves were. One is related to birth rate, another is to GDP growth rate. 
Now the conceptual understanding tells us that birth rate is not related to GDP growth rate and vice versa. Therefore, these two curves, even if they are having some kind of correlation, are meaningless. For example, another two variables, you can say that birth rate and number of metros, again, these two are not related conceptually. But if we have data and if we try to calculate correlation, the correlation value may be there. So therefore, causal relation will always be there. But there is no evidence for ca causal relationship, casual relationship is there. So because of this reason, the difference between causal relationship and casual relationship is very important. Now, if we see Raghuram Rajan in his book, Saving Capitalism from the Capital's Rights, and this is a very good definition and simple definition that correlation is a statistical superstition while causality is a science. And econometrics deals with this kind of science that is causality, which is cause and effect relationship. The whole focus of using mathematical procedures, statistical pro procedure with modification is with the objective of finding causality between different variables. And therefore, cause and effect relationship is important. And why cause and effect relationship becomes a problem or it is difficult to, uh, to find out in social behavior and economic behavior, for that we have to understand another phenomena that is randomness. Whenever we try to see that A affects B, there is always an element of randomness. That when we say A affects B, it's not only a relation between A and B in the real world. There is relation between A, B, C, D, E. So A affects B, but B may also be affected by C, by D, by E, anything else. We'll take an example for that as well. So we call it randomness, that there are random variables, random phenomena that are affecting social behavior, economic behavior, economic indicators, social indicators, etc. And this is making the relationship a complex relationship. For a layman, I will recommend three books here that you can read to identify what randomness is in detail and how randomness affect our decisions and policy making. And the problem of randomness can only be solved by applying econometrics techniques and methods. This is by Naseem Nicholas Taleb. Another book is by Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow. Another book is The Black Swan by Naseem Nicholas Taleb. Another book is The Dunkard's Walk by, again, uh, Leonardo Now, All these four books identify that randomness leads to an outcome which is not expected which creates a problem to identify cause and effect relationship between different variables. You know, you know, in basic sciences, we can have controlled experiments. But when we are trying to understand economic relationship, economic behavior, social behavior, there is no controlled experiments. Because we cannot control the behavior of the people. It depends on climate. It depends on their current mental status. It depends on their family background. It depends on what kind of uh, what culture they are having, uh, whether they are satisfied or not, etc. So randomness is always there. And this randomness needs to be solved because we don't want to be fools. And if we don't want to be fools in our decisions, whether it is related to policy making, to our daily lives, to critical decisions, to research, we need to solve this problem of randomness. Because when we solve the problem of randomness, then only we will reach to a cause and effect relationship between different variables. And this kind of relationship is important because we have complex relationship in an economic and social setup. And because of this complex relationship, policy making is affected. So we have an error term, we call it the random variable, which represent randomness in a particular model. And this has a philosophy, which comes from philosophy of randomness. Suppose we have a function that y as the dependent variable is the function of several independent variables. 
and for that we'll take a easy example of health function now health of a person depends on what we know that it depends on age food intake exercise mental well-being gender anger patience money honey sunny etc there can be n number of things this is debatable people may come to four they somebody may say 10 somebody may say five etc so it can be n number of things that determines health so we have written this function that health of a person is the function of a age a food intake e exercise and mental well-being gender anger patience etc till infinity several we have now we want to see three or four main determinants because we want to focus on three or four if suppose also in my life i want to focus on my health i have to identify the most important two to three things on which i have to work because there are n number of things i cannot work on n number of things i have to identify selected few on which i can work i can take note of i can see the trend of those things so if suppose we have identified four a f e m g five then we have left the others which but others will always be having an impact on health function because we have random this sometimes even others may be much more impactful than the primary ones so we cannot say that other variables which we have not included are not going to impact the health function therefore we have to assume all other factors to be a constant and we call them setters variables wherein comes the randomness of all those variables and we try to uh, solve this problem of randomness with this random term stochastic variable so this is important and this is the understanding of econometric function moving on if we see the background and historical development of econometrics because now we have understood what it attempts to achieve and how it is achieving that if we see the historical development of econometrics as a discipline in 1930s economists statisticians and mathematicians came to develop this new branch and together they formed the econometric society in usa and the founders were the ragnar fish who has given the classification of micro and macro economics and joseph schumpeter they were the proponents you, are, you know Joseph Schumpeter as one of the pioneers in the entrepreneurship writing. And they had the influence of logical positivism or empiricism, which means that evidence is very important for taking a decision. And intuition should not be used primarily, but there will always, there should always be a search for uh, empirical evidence, which is known as logical positivism. Though there is some criticism of the same, uh, that always in social sciences empiricism cannot work but most of the time it do work in policy making and with the advancement or in the analytical framework particularly computational analysis there the problems that were associated with empiricism has now been solved so why the question is as researchers as learners as uh, teachers we do are familiar with the statistics we apply statistics we appreciate statistics and if we are comfortable with statistics why we should go for econometrics why to have understanding of econometrics when statistics are available at our disposal the first thing is if we believe that three experts are better than one then we should go for econometrics because econometrics is a combination of mathematics, statistics, and economic or any other social theory. So we are going to combine these three things together to conclude. And these three are the three experts. If you believe no one expert is better than three, then obviously you can go for a statistics or mathematics separately. The second particular argument is that statistical models are more casual than causal. For example, correlation is a statistical technique. Correlation does not identify cause and effect relationship. 
the first criteria is there should be a conceptual relationship now conceptual relationship itself means that there should be some kind of theoretical cause and effect relationship without that correlation cannot work so the problem with the statistical models are that most of the statistical models are casual in nature not causal in nature and they depend themselves on the causal understanding of the phenomena and the causal understanding of phenomena everybody cannot have only people who are well versed in cause and effect relationship or have an idea of cause and effect relationship only they can delve into that so that is one of the limitation another is that statistical models are deterministic in nature now deterministic models what means suppose we say that income of a consumer is dependent on three variables a b c in a statistics we will say okay it is only a b c now d e f does not exist so we will try to relate them try to identify the impact and then take a give a conclusion and then take a decision based on that conclusion but we know that it is d e f which we have not taken they are also exist they also exist in the real world and therefore they will have an impact on income of a consumer so therefore statistical models are deterministic in nature but the real time data which we have is indeterministic because the real time data reflects all the variables that may affect it so econometrics try to incorporate uh, and work on an indeterministic model rather than having more deterministic approach so we have again three key takeaways from session 2 number 1 is that cause and effect relationship is the key concept of econometrics and it is different from correlation correlation is to be considered an a, an a, a superstition while causality is a science the second key take away is that whenever we have a model a function in that function random variables do play an important role and it is only through econometrics modeling and technique that the randomness of a particular function may be minimized third take away is that econometrics is considered to be superior because it is a combination a blend of three branches mathematics statistics and economic theory and also because it focuses on real time modeling rather than deterministic modeling that exists in only in statistics i hope that second session has been helpful for you and you will be able to solve the multiple choice questions on the basis of first and second session thank you thank you very much for attending this second session